Brussels remains on edge today, five days after terror attacks at the Brussels airport and a subway station. ISIS has claimed responsibility and released a new video Saturday. The highly edited piece features a known Belgian jihadist. He threatens more attacks on Belgium and Europe. The video also shows interviews of people in Syria who voice support of the attacks. At the end, the militant appears to execute a prisoner. Meantime, there have been more than a dozen raids across Belgium this weekend. Three more men have been charged with terror offenses. 28 victims and three attackers were killed in Tuesday's bombings. Security forces are stretched thin across the country, forcing a march against fear to be canceled. Right-wing demonstrators instead took to the streets. As you see here, hundreds of protesters entered the central square in Brussels. Riot police fought them back. Vladimir Dutier has been reporting from Brussels all week and joins us now. Vlad, thanks so much for being with us. Tell us what's happening there today. It doesn't seem like things are calming down very much. Well, Jamie, in fact, things have calmed down a, but, uh, uh, significantly since earlier today. As you pointed out, earlier today, there was supposed to be a march here in the city, a march against hate, against terrorism. That was canceled because the city did not want the already stretched police units uh, diverted to protecting uh, and to ensuring that the march went off smoothly. But people still showed up anyway. At some point, there were people that were gathered up behind me here in Place de la Bourse. You can see that uh, there is still a large crowd, but there were people that were there earlier. Uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it seemed, uh, hundreds of people, most of them dressed in black, showed up, uh, many of them uh, making Nazi salutes, uh, Nazi, Nazi signs, uh, shouting in French, we are here, we are at home, meaning uh, to, to sort of say that this is their land, this is their country. Some of them appeared to us to be drinking alcohol. Uh, police had to move in, riot police moved in, in some cases using water cannon uh, to get the situation under control. and slow Slowly but surely, uh, you can see it's now returned back to normal. No sign of those uh, individuals anymore. But that is the situation uh, here where people are still very, very tense, as you point out, uh, because of the attacks that happened last week and because of the raids that are being conducted. Even as we speak, Jamie, we know today across Brussels, at least 13 police raids uh, uh, occurred across the city. And in one case, we know that the operation, the investigation into what happened is expanding internationally. There was an Algerian man who was arrested uh, in Italy uh, earlier today, Jamie. That's, I'm, I'm glad to know things have calmed down a little bit. It, it sounds much different than the peace march that was originally supposed to take place uh, that ended up happening. How do you think things were handled once those demonstrators showed up? I, I, you know, there are reports, like you just said, of these police moving in. Were there, were there clashes or, or how did people surrounding what was happening, how did they feel about it? Well, police very quickly cordoned off the area. Uh, so in this square, there are several streets leading into it. Uh, police sectioned off that area. They moved in uh, with riot gear, in some cases with water cannon. There were some scuffles. Uh, we witnessed some scuffles happening place. Uh, happening here, uh, but they were very efficient, at least to my eyes. It looked as if they had a handle on the situation very quickly. Uh, they didn't, they weren't too aggressive with some of the uh, protesters. In some cases, they let them eventually peter out, uh, but, but they were really on the scene. Um, there were at least, there, there were several hundred police officers, um, and they seemed to have a good handle on the situation. And that was evidenced by the fact that as soon as those individuals left, as soon as they cleared the area away, uh, the police sort of backed off and allowed people to come back to the square uh, to pay their uh, condolences, in some cases to mourn uh, those that lost their lives on Tuesday, Jamie. Yeah, we're showing video now of those demonstration uh, demonstrators being pushed back. I do want to ask you, um, in your reporting, the interview with victim Sebastian Bellin really sticks out to me from this last week. Can you tell us how he's doing? And I know he was so anxious to get back to his family. He's still in the hospital. Uh, yeah, when I met Sebastian Bena, that was one of the most incredible moments of this trip uh, that we've been on uh, because he has was such a strong individual, even lying in bed the way that he was uh, with the legs, the conditions that his legs were in. This is a guy who uh, he sort of raised himself up to, to greet me, to shake my hand. Um, he was such, he was so full of spirit that I actually felt that he was probably even in that condition that he was in stronger than I was, uh, certainly in spirit um, and even possibly physically. He's doing well. Um, hopefully he'll be out of the hospital soon. We don't have an exact date as to when doctors are going to release him and hopefully he'll be reunited with his family soon. 
We had also thought that the airport may reopen this weekend. Of course, that changed, and now it sounds like it could be Tuesday at the earliest because of new security measures that potentially could go into place. Do we know what those security measures could be? Officials are being uh, very cagey about exactly what security precautions they're looking to put into place into that. But you're right, the airport opening has been extended to possibly Tuesday. Uh, they may push it back again, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, it is very, very fluid. I think part of it is that they want to make sure that everything uh, that they can possibly do to ensure the safety of travelers is put into place. And so they're not going to rush this. They're going to take their time uh, to reopen that airport. And so we're going to keep on them to figure out exactly if they'll stick to that timetable. But at some point, uh, they may decide to change that and uh, open it much later in the week, Jamie. I, I have to ask, you know, I saw um, on Facebook and on social media and things that you were able to get out a little bit and, and be in the community um, at some different restaurants and things. What's the feeling like there? Can you tell us what it's like being over there? You know, as in all cases, uh, wherever, whenever we report these things, uh, these horrific acts, eventually people start to go about their daily lives. Uh, they keep the memory of the ones who lost their lives and the ones that are still injured very close to them. They uh, know that people are hurt and that families are still reeling from the loss of their loved ones. But people have to go to work. People have to carry on with their lives. It is uh, Easter Sunday for some people. That's a very uh, important holiday. Uh, we did get out around into the city and saw some of that return to normal. But we also visited some of the neighborhoods where the police have been conducting raids. We went to Scarbeck, we went to Molenbeek, and in those communities at one point today, uh, I noticed an area, a very nice uh, green space. It was a much nicer day. It's starting the rain now. It was a much nicer day earlier today. And I was in Scarbeck uh, walking with a man who uh, was born and raised and lived in the neighborhood. And he said to me, look, you know, on a, sat on a Sunday like today, this entire square would be filled with kids playing football and having fun. Uh, they are too scared. Uh, these are, again, these, uh, I should point out that these would be the children of, of, of immigrants um, or first-generation Belgians. Um, they are so still distraught about these police raids, about the fact that in some cases terrorists are living in their midst, that children were not out in the square at all. They were just staying at home. That's how frightened they were, Jamie. Wow. Glad Duthier, thank you so much for your reporting in Brussels.